Hello everyone. Today's topic is acid rain and its effects photochemical smog. So in this class we will learn what is the phenomenon, what are the form of acid deposition, causes of acid rain, what are the sequence of photochemical reactions in smog formation and mainly what can we do to stop acid rain. So please watching till the end of my video. Welcome back once again in your tutorial. This is Nausin and you are watching educational support. If you like this video then press a subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it. So let's get started. Do you know what is acid rain? Acid rain is a rain or any other form of precipitation that is unusually acidic meaning that it has elevated levels of hydrogen ions. It can have harmful effects on plants, aquatic animals and infrastructure. Acid rain is caused by emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide which react with the water molecules in the atmosphere to produce acids. Some governments have made efforts since the 1970s to reduce the release of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide into the atmosphere with positive results. Nitrogen oxides can also be produced naturally by lightning strikes and sulfur dioxide is produced by volcanic eruptions. Acid rain has been shown to have adverse impacts on forest, fresh waters, soils, killing insects and aquatic life forms causing pain to peel, corrosion of steel structures such as bridges, weathering of stone buildings and statues as well as having impacts on human health. So next is what is acidity? and acid rain and the pH scale. We know that acidic and basic are two ways which are described in chemical compounds. Acidity is measured by a pH scale. Do you know what is pH scale? A pH scale runs from 0 the most acidic to 14, the most basic or alkaline. We know that clear rain has a pH value of between 5.0 and 5.5, which is slightly acidic. But when rain combines with sulfur dioxide or nitrogen oxides, then the rain becomes more acidic. A decrease in pH values from 5.0 to 4.0, it means that the acidity is 10 times greater. What do you mean by wet and dry form of acid deposition? Acid rain is rain that has been made acidic by certain pollutants in the air. So acid rain is a type of acid deposition which can appear in many forms. Actually 
acid rain is the one phase of acidic deposition can either be wet or dry. So first is wet deposition. <clears throat> wet deposition is what we most commonly think of as acid rain. Wet deposition is rain, snow or fog that has become more acidic than normal. The sulfuric acids and nitric acids formed in the atmosphere fall to the ground mixed with rain, snow, fog etc. Acid rain, snow, dew, fog, frost and mist represent the wet form of deposition. Second is dry deposition. So dry deposition is another form of acid deposition and this is when gases and dust particles become acidic. The acidic particles and, and gases may deposit to surfaces quickly atmospheric transport to form larger particles that can be harmful to the human health. When the accumulated acids are washed off a surface by the next rain, this acidic water flows over to the ground and can harm plants and wildlife such as and insects and fish. But when wet and dry deposition can be carried by the wind or sometimes for very long distances, acid deposition in wet and dry forms falls on buildings, skirts and trees and can make text less acidic. However, the oil train is much more common. Next, we are going to focus on what causes acid drain. Acid drain results when sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides are emitted into the atmosphere and transported by wind and air currents. So emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide are released into the air where the pollutants are transformed into the acid particles that may be transported long distances. The SO2 and NO2 react with water, oxygen and other chemicals to form sulfuric acid and nitric acids. This then mix with water and other materials before falling to the ground. This acid particles then fall to the earth as wet and dry deposition and may cause harmful effects on soil, forest, streams and lakes. While a small portion of the socks and knocks that cause acid rain is from natural sources such as volcanoes, most of it comes from the burning of fossil fuels. The major sources of socks and NOx in the atmosphere are burning of fossil fuels to generate electricity. Two thirds of SOX and one fourth of NOx in the atmosphere come from electric power generators, vehicles and heavy equipment manufacturing, oil refresher and other industries.
So viewers, if you enjoyed this video or learned anything, then press a like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you anyone missed my previous videos, then visit my YouTube channel Educational Support. A link of these videos are given in my description box below. So go for it and subscribe my channel. So next is effects of acid rain or why is acid rain harmful? The major effects are the following. Living things and non-living things. Living things are plants, animals and humans, aquatic life and non-living things are Monuments. So all these are affected by acid rain. Acid rain damages lakes and streams without pollution or acid rain. Most lakes and streams would have a pH level near 6.5. Acid rain, however, has caused many lakes and streams in the Northeast United States and certain other places to have much lower pH levels. In addition, aluminium that is released into the soil eventually ends up in lakes and streams. And unfortunately, this increase in acidity and aluminium levels can be deadly to aquatic wildlife including phytoplankton, frogs, salamanders, crayfish and other creatures that are part of food web. So air pollution like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides can cause respiratory diseases or can make this disease worse. Respiratory diseases like asthma or chronic bronchitis make it hard for people to breathe. The pollution that cause acid rain can also create tiny particles when these particles get into people's lungs. They can cause health problems or can make existing health problems worse. Also, nitrogen oxides cause ground level ozone. This ground level ozone causes respiratory problems, pneumonia and bronchitis and can even cause permanent lung damages. The health effects that people have to worry about are not caused by the acid rain but are caused when people breathe in these tiny particles or ozone. So swimming is an acidic lake or walking in an acidic pool is no more harmful to people than swimming or walking in clean water. So acid rain harms forest and acid rain can be extremely harmful and that can seep into the ground and can dissolve nutrients such as magnesium and calcium The trees need to be healthy. But acid rain also causes aluminium to be released into the soil which makes it difficult for trees to take up water. Trees that are located in mountains regions at higher elevations are at greater risk because they are exposed to acidic clouds and fog, which contains greater amounts of acid than rain or snow. The acidic clouds and fog strips important nutrients from their leaves and needles. 
This loss of nutrients makes it easier for infections, insects and cold weather to damage trees and forest. Acid rain damages buildings and objects. So acid rain can also have a damaging effect on many objects including buildings, statues, monuments and cars. The chemicals found in acid rain can cause pain to peel and stone statues to begin to appear old and worn down which reduces their values and beauty. Due to atmospheric pollution, rainfall is made so acidic which causes harm to the environment and the main cause is due to industrial burning of fuels that contain sulfur and nitrogen oxides which combines with water and form of acid. The acid rain which causes substantial damages to buildings made of marble, limestone, slot, etc. Attack of acid rain on marble is termed as stone leprosy. So next is what causes acid fog? What is acid fog? Hoffman says the acid comes from the emissions of automobiles, power plants and oil production facilities. These sources produce hundreds of tons of nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxide daily. The pollutants are picked up by atmospheric moisture that condenses into fog and fog having increased acidity caused by environmental factors, even so a combination of acid fog and ozone may have made trees on this and other eastern submits more vulnerable to weather. Did you know what is acid run? Run is frozen cloud weather which may condense or Snowflakes or exposed surface. Rain constitutes up to 60% of the snowpack in some mountains areas and the deposition of acidic constituents with time may be a significant vector for transfer of acidic atmospheric constituents to earth surface. In some cases, so acid rain is a source of precipitation heavy in ammonia, sulfate and nitrate ions associated with atmospheric acid is called acid rime. Now move on characteristics of naturally acidic lakes. So brown to yellow color caused by humic substances Concentrations of dissolved organic carbon are high while transparency is low and low pH below 5 but well buffered. So these lakes generally have a greater acid neutralizing capacity, presence of humic Fulvic and other organic acids keeps availability of toxic metals in check. So next, characteristics of anthropogenically acidified are very clear water caused by reduced primary productivity that is lack of phytoplankton, concentrations of dissolved organic carbon are low while transparency is high, once the alkalinity 
is exhausted, the pH decreases rapidly and poorly buffered. So these lakes generally have a less acid neutralizing capacity and no such cousin available. So what are the important measures to control acid rain or what can we do to stop acid rain? So some measures may be taken lightly to counter acidification of streams, soil and rest of the environment. Some of the measures are usually lime in the form of calcium oxides and calcium carbonate is used. Lime water added to water and soil to neutralize acid so that reducing the effects of acid rain by liming. Breathing of hatchery in acidified waters and this participate replenishes fish population that would otherwise decline, thus helping to maintain an ecological balance within acidified lakes. So next is how can excess emission of socks and nox from industries be prevented. So use less energy, use cleaner fuels, remove oxides of sulfur and oxides of nitrogen before releasing. By using this amount of sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen released are reduced into the atmosphere. Use cleaner fuels that are coal that contains less sulfur, washing the coal to reduce sulfur content, use other sources of electricity like nuclear power, hydro hydroelectricity, wind energy, etc. So these are the most important measures to control acid rain and this measure produces must be followed to control acid rain. So we know that smog is a combination of smoke and fog. So it is formed from the ground level upward to an altitude of few kimi high. If so, then what is photochemical smoke? So photochemical smoke is a type of smoke produced when ultraviolet light from the sun reacts with nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere and it is visible as a brown haze and is most prominent during the morning and afternoon, especially in densely populated warm cities. So photochemical smog is mainly an urban air pollution problems as the main contributing pollutants are from automobile pollution sources. So sequences of photochemical reactions in smog formation or how is photochemical smog formed? Photochemical form is formed by a complex series of chemical reactions involving sunlight, oxides of nitrogen and volatile organic compounds that are present in the atmosphere as a result of air pollution. So these reactions often result in the formation of ground level ozone and certain airborne particles. So the formation of photochemical smog is closely related to the concentration of primary pollutants in the 
atmosphere. It is also related to the concentration of secondary pollutants. Common examples of primary pollutants that contribute towards photochemical smog includes oxides of nitrogen such as nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide and nitrous oxide and most volatile organic compounds. Common examples of secondary pollutants that contribute towards the formation of photochemical smog includes aldehydes, peroxyacetyl nitrates. So during peak level or peak traffic hours in the morning, large amounts of nitrogen oxides and volatile hydrocarbons are released into the atmosphere. So these pollutants can be traced to automobile emissions and industrial discharge and some of these hydrocarbon pollutants rapidly undergo oxidation by the hydroxyl groups in the atmosphere resulting in the formation of peroxy radicals. So these peroxy radicals go on to convert nitric oxide into nitrogen dioxide. So here I am showing the major differences between London smog and Los Angeles smog. So the presence of sulfur dioxide which is formed by burning of coal, it involves no photochemistry, no photochemistry and is commonly known as sulfurous smog or London smog. In London smog 1952, more than 4,000 people died from respiratory failure. The mixture of smoke, fog and socks which affected London so badly after the introduction of the coal as a fuel and is chemically a reducing mixture. So the London smog is also known as reducing smog. NOx in the atmosphere due to photochemical reactions of automobile exhaust causes the formation of smog called Los Angeles smog or photochemical smog. Los Angeles in California experienced serious type of air pollution during 1944 which was characterized by visibility, eye irritation and plant damage. So the pollution was caused by photochemical smoke. So check your progress. Number one is what do you mean by wet and dry form of acid deposition? What is acid rime? Number two is, what are the characteristics of anthropogenically acidified lakes? Number three is, what is stone leprosy? Number four is, how can excess emission of socks and knocks from industries be prevented? Number five is, what are the differences between London smoke and Los Angeles smoke? And number six is give the sequence of photochemical reactions in smoke formation. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So keep watching and keep learning. In the comment section, you can tell me how satisfied are you with this class? And then please put down a comment under this video because this will help me to improve better. So subscribe my channel, like and share this video with your friends and also press a bell icon right next to it. And have you watching to know more about this related topics then keep visiting educational support. Thank you.